Today we're going to have an overview of the Maximus Ace Hero motherboard from ASUS. This is your ROG product, so inside you're going to have an absolute ton of extras. But today we're really just going to focus on the board. So let's jump in and have a look. Because we've got such a great amount to cover today, what I'm going to do is just work around these edges. Talking about connectors and headers and different features. And then we'll move on and have a bit of a closer look at the visuals. So... Running along this side, what we first got are what, two SATA Express, and then we've got a further eight SATA ports, six gigabyte ports, and some are the onboard Intel solution, and then there are some further ports from the AS Media controller. Then we have a USB 3.0 header here, and just above it is the first of seven four pin connectors for fans, got the main 24 pin, and then another fan connector here. Just along the top here, we've got the debug LED, just in case you have any issues, and then a mem OK button above it. Now along the back, this is where we tend to find at least one or generally two four-pin connectors for our fans. Ideal if you've got a big tower cooler with dual fans. Now ASUS have actually put in three, and the third is actually a dedicated and optimized connector for water pumps. Now I haven't had a chance to play around with it, but from the information I've got, it means you've got a little bit more control in terms of how much power is going into that. Very cool, interesting feature. A pin connector up here, and that's about it for this section. Taking a peek around the back, first thing we've got is our PS2 combo port. Then we've got USB 2.0 ports, BIOS flashback, display port, and HDMI. We have USB 3.1, which the red one is type A. And then the black is obviously the new Type C. We've got a further two USB 3.0 ports in blue, Gigabit LAN from Intel, and then our audio solution. Now the audio solution has been upgraded on this this generation's ROG product. What we've got now is the Supreme 2015, and we've got an integrated DAC in there, and quite a few small but subtle changes that all add up to a pretty good onboard audio solution. And along the bottom, we've got a few more things to quickly go over. We've got a Thunderbolt port, start and reset button, and a clear CMOS button. Incidentally, these two buttons do light up, so that's really cool for a test bench user like me when I'm working late at night. Being able to find these without having to whip out the Torch app on my phone is appreciated. Now, we've got support for the ROG extension panel, which is a, another peripheral. And then we have USB 2.0 header, another USB 3.0 zero header and then another four pin fan connector here and what's interesting about the m2 on this product is first there's only one a lot of the other brands have been pushing two for z170 but let's be real realistic about it you're just not going to need to and there's going to be a very very small niche market that wants to have more than one of those but what's logical about it is its location it's actually down here below between the second and third slot now remember the first slot your x16 this will be your x8 if you're running a dual card setup so but i think we've covered the six of the fan connectors there's actually another one hiding up here just before the very first pcie slot which brings a total to seven for a 160 pound product is pretty unique and you just don't expect it so to coincide with the new sort of color scheme which is sort of grays black silvers and metallics and uh, gunmetal sort of colors which is a real sort of step away from the traditional bold red and black what asus have done to sort of supplement and add on to this is to give us rgb lighting in this portion of the heatsink directly under the rog logo now you can either disable that completely or you can tweak it inside windows with a nice little application but what i will mention is that underneath the supreme fx we have a traditional sort of red light running down here it's quite common to see those now so obviously if you've got say some nvidia hardware and you want to set this to green but then you've still got a red light down here you know that just isn't going to work so you can disable that led altogether which is a really cool feature um i would like to have seen rgb control over there but what can you do? This is a £160 product after all. So, as I said, aside from the colour change, the big sort of push here is the shrouding. 
which goes over all the audio section, completely over the I.O. and it wraps neatly and lays across this heat sink here, which I'm hoping the camera will pick it up on the main portion here. It does sort of reflect and pick up the light and give a slightly different tint depending on which angle you look at it. But this runs along the top and it looks really, really good. Now what I will say, which sort of ties in about the lighting effect, if you really don't want to have red, something I really would have liked Asus to have done was to add some inserts here, uh, perhaps some free vinyls that you could have just covered those over. It's a very small job that you can do by yourself and it should definitely not impact your warranty just putting some vinyls over here so uh, visually it's very much still an Asus ROG product but just not as much red as we come to expect now as I've said in the written reviews visuals are a big part of motherboards and Asus have been at the forefront of that for many years I'm really pleased that they made the decision to step away from the red and blacks there still is a market for them but this is a very middle ground approach you've got just something a bit more neutral but it doesn't seem like they've lost what the product is meant to be about it's very much still a gaming product but there's lots of features here for overclocking and such so um, what we're going to do next is just talk briefly about performance overclocking and then a general wrap up but if you want a real insight into what I found with the product please do head off to the link below and read that in detail. Right then it's time to wrap up with the conclusion for the Asus Maximus 8 Hero Z170 Skylake motherboard. Twister. Right so it's been a really good experience. First of all hard to believe this is literally the first Asus product that I've worked with. Uh, sorry the Asus ROG product that I've worked with. Um, and as I say in the written review that's not a conscious decision that I've made to avoid them. Um, it's just I've been drawn to other brands for personal builds and different things so um, I'm really pleased that I've finally got a chance to work with them because I've heard great things for numerous years and after working with the product I definitely agree they are extremely good quality very user friendly and rock solid and an eye on an experience is definitely the best way I could sum it up I really enjoyed working with the product so overclocking, performance, all that jazz um, overclocking was pretty impressive you know. In terms of where I clocked with the multiplier, I did hit the limit of my CPU, which is 48. Um, so there's nothing significant to mention about that. But when working with the, the bus side of it, the new approach with Skylake, um, being able to push that to, I think it was something crazy, like 340 on the bus, was pretty impressive. Some of the other boards that I've worked with have struggled to get over 200. Um, so that's a pretty big deal in itself. Support is a big thing. Um, one of the issues I've had so far is with memory and XMP. Nearly every board that I've had to date, including ones after launch with BIOS updates too, still have issue with XMP. Whereas this product, which didn't even have the latest BIOS on when I received the sample, uh, picked up two different bits that I'd have trouble with elsewhere and just worked flawlessly, no issue whatsoever. Now in the background, that's because Asus I've done a lot more to make sure there was a lot of certification and testing has gone on for different memory kits before launch and obviously they'll continue to push and update that so that's worth mentioning. Not being able to set M XMP isn't that big of a deal for most of us we can just go in there and manually type them in but for convenience sake um, I'm delighted that this is the first Skylake product that I've had that worked with two different memory kits that I've got that have been troublesome elsewhere. Uh, the M2 port that I mentioned earlier, um, two out of the four other uh, Z170 products I've looked at have dual. This one even had triple M2. And I've been pleased about that, but realistically, you know, what I've come to realize is who needs that many ports? Um, and it's not even the limit of having one port that, I've, that I'm bothered about, really. But what I do appreciate with uh, the location here is that it's it's in the right point firstly so you can access it without having to pull out your gpus but also if you're using something like um the kingston predator which is one of the few nice looking m2 products you can actually see it and appreciate it well, you know rather than these ridiculous green ones that we've got elsewhere but i just don't think it's that big of a deal having more than two that said if it had two that would be fine but 
or 160 pounds, really no problem whatsoever. Um, the amount of fan headers and connectors and then having one optimized for water cooling pumps is just brilliant. You just don't expect these sorts of features for the price point. It definitely could have warranted a much higher price tag, as I said earlier. Um, it's about 160 pounds on the day of recording and putting up my written review, which again is in the link where I can waffle a little bit more because I need to wrap up and see it. Um, it's been a really good experience. I do hope to be looking at some more ASUS products in the future. Um, and I, I can be perfectly honest and, and sort of admit that I did have hesitations or reservations, should I say, about price points of ROG products in the past. Um, but I've definitely been converted today. It's just been the easiest motherboard review that I've had to do in terms of having no problems, everything just working well. The software especially. Um, as a consumer, I tend to avoid even touching the driver disk that you get. I'll just download and install what I need. And even then, I'll, I tend to uninstall them after a little while. I just don't want the bloatware. But the software with the Asus products is just so lightweight and optimized and logical. And because they're split into separate apps rather than one big forced all-in-one interface, you've got a bit of a choice as to what do you want and what do you need and what's worth having for you. So I do appreciate that. Um, incidentally, the product picked up triple awards when I produced the written review. I thought it was well worth value, performance and design because the design's brilliant in terms of the layout and the thought process that's gone in there. It's got so many little extra features that no other product in this price point had. So that's going to do it for today. Uh, I'd like to thank ASUS for sending out sample and hopefully we can look at more in the not so distant future. <coughs> Right then, it's time to wrap up with a really brief conclusion because, as I said, the full details of this review of my dog is just being a difficult bastard. Sit down. <whistles> Sit. Come on. Ugh. Come on. In there. Come on. Back off.